Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about our program design. Today we're talking about Kettlebell Plus Two-Handed Club. I think we've talked about this in some version in the past, but we're going to refresh this because we're going to start talking about this again. We talked about this a lot last year at the beginning of the year, but let's get nerdier with it. So we used to have a nice fancy cork board, and now we're on a chalkboard here in the barn. The simplest version of this program is kettlebells two days a week and two-handed club two days a week. This is like basically a foolproof strategy for improved athleticism very, very quickly in a very simple way. Kettlebell order of operation video we had for the kettlebells. Think about that operating these two days with a heavy day and a light day and a two-handed club day. We had an order of operation video on that as well. Two-handed club runs on levels one to seven of complexity, seven families of movement, though sometimes I like to do eight levels of complexity or eight movements just to really sauce it up. And we have a light and a heavy day. The interesting part about this is heavy, light, light, heavy. Kettlebell heavy, kettlebell light, two-hand club light, two-hand club heavy. That's kind of where the secret for this comes from. When we're trying to run these programs, if you just run a heavy day, heavy day all the time, it tends to beat you up pretty quickly. This is why we would like to have multiple weights. Running a program this way is simpler than running just an all kettlebell program. If you were running an all kettlebell program, then you might be doing say Turkish get up and swing, Turkish get up, swing, and then squat, clean, and press, squat, clean, and press. We're gonna have to simplify that if you wanna keep it in the same amount of time. If you have an infinite amount of time, you can do whatever you want. But think about our kettlebell heavy. Let's just go ahead and keep that as say, swings and Turkish get ups, heavy, and then light day. And there can be a flip in there as well. It could be a heavy Turkish get up, a light swing, a light swing, and a heavy Turkish get up. What we're doing is we're sacrificing a lot of the other kettlebell movements for the two-handed club. There are six fundamental movements in kettlebelling. We have our swing, our clean, our snatch, our press, our squat, and our Turkish getup. In clubs, we have kind of analogs to a lot of that stuff. It's not a direct analog because clubs are more, well, they're circles. Clubs are circles, whereas kettlebells are curved linear. So, but we have our seven families movements. We have the squat, we have a clean and press, we have a side swing, we have a lunge, we have a mill pattern, we have a swipe pattern, and we have a get up pattern. So the two-handed club is kind of meant to be almost a perfect form of training by itself. The problem with having any type of perfect form of training is that nothing's ever perfect. The club operates differently than a kettlebell. I like to think of weights in these two categories, kettlebells being a big offset center of mass that's close to your body, a club being a lever. Kettlebells would go in kind of the same family as sandbags or atlas stones and clubs would go in the family of maces and hydrocore. And those are kind of the two general-ish families that we have in training. Uh, also in kettlebell, you could consider that into a barbell category if you really wanted to get crazy with it. But this is the basic layout. You're gonna end up sacrificing something in your kettlebell programs in order to do the two-handed club program. It doesn't matter that much. Eventually, if you keep running this program, you'll keep replacing these days back and forth. This does not have to stay a swing and a Turkish get up forever. It could become clean and press and squat on these days. It could become clean and press and deck squat. That's the beauty of these forms of training. The Tetris of training goes on forever. We can replace things and pull them out based on what the program we're writing is for. If we were writing a program for mountaineers, we would choose different things in the kettlebell sections. If we were writing a program for competitive cheerleaders, it would be different. If it was for circus aerialists, it would be different. We would pick our kettlebell days based on what we wanted to accomplish. In that sense, we would leave our two-hand club program alone because it's gonna fill in just massive numbers of holes on its own just by leaving that two-hand club program running. On our off days, we would do joint mobility. 
There are many versions of joint mobility out there. I can think of 10 off the top of my head. Uh, one of my favorite recovery strategies would actually be kinesiology yoga from the Flow Shala Studios run by Summer Huntington. That's probably the best alternate to this program because it's complexity, it's yoga, it's stretching. The kettlebells will be the heavy thing in this program, lifting heavy things twice a week. The two-hand club program is also relatively a heavy program but it's a different type of program. It's not straight lines at all. It's all circles. So your body will recover differently from these two things. If I have actors or somebody come into my studio in LA, this is the program that everybody goes on in the beginning. Everybody, because it solves the greatest number of potential problems in the smallest period of time, having the most amount of benefit for the least amount of time, having the most amount of benefit for the least amount of equipment, and teaching people to move better. When people want to be in shape or fit, they try to mimic a look of being fit without mimicking the movement of being fit. The fittest people on the planet are dancers, martial artists, and they move well. When people want to get in shape, they tend to leave out the moving well part and they go to the gym and they get on a leg press and they do a bunch of leg press and they wonder why they never become like those people they see on TV or in movies or whatever. And it's because they never learned to move. We really like this strategy because it teaches people to move very well, very effectively. The two-handed club program, just in the first four levels, Seven families times four levels is 28 movements. 28 movements just in the club program, in the basic version of it, that are going to make you move better, stand taller, move your arms better, turn left, turn right better. Zoolander is a hilarious movie, and I love it, and it's super true. People are not ambi-turners. The programs here are designed to make you ambi-turners. Kettlebells teach you how to just pick things up. That's amazing that that is needed, but in the modern world, people do not have physical jobs for the most part. There is not a large section of the population that is roofers or construction workers. And even those jobs, as we get more tools, become more automated. Roofers are not putting down 20,000 nails a day anymore and swinging a hammer 20,000 times or walking 90 pound bales of shingles up onto the roof anymore. An elevator comes and brings all that up. They have a nail gun and they shoot it. A lot of the basic movements that humans are supposed to do, that we're supposed to be really good at, that make us really human, have been automated out of existence. So this is probably our best strategy overall for making people move well. Moving well reduces pain, makes your quality of life just way better. And you know, that's the goal of training for the most part. Be more human. Don't die. You know, simple things like that. Uh, this has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and we will continue to add to this idea as we go.